I wanted to start with uh, Pinoy Pop Superstar. Yes. So that was something that you started with. Mm -hmm. How was it to feel? How did it feel to gain so much success in Asia? Um, you know what? It was great because it's my hometown. You know, like. It, it, it was really cool because I wanted Vancouver at first. In Vancouver, they like narrowed it down. There was thousands of people that auditioned, and then they narrowed it down to 30, and then they narrowed it down to one, and I managed to win, so they sent me over to Asia, and that's where I performed for three months. And then it was so, it was really cool to have my own people embrace. Mm -hmm. Embrace. Okay. Yeah. Was it hard, <laughs> the, the competition? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did they work you really hard? Yes, every night was a performance. Every night. For how many nights? Uh, every night for four months straight. Four. So, yes, and we would do talk shows in the morning. We would do. We did everything. So it was pretty tiring. But how did you feel? You know, once after all that was done, they announced you the winner. Um. Actually, I didn't win in in the Philippines, but I did manage to place. Oh. I won in Vancouver, and as as a prize, I got to represent Vancouver, Canada, in, in the Philippines. But then I didn't exactly win, but it was it was a good growing experience. But you, you gained a lot of success in Asia, didn't you? You toured mm -hmm. a lot and stuff. Mm -hmm. How was that? It was it was amazing. First you know, taste I, of success. Yeah, I a lot of experience. It was a good growing experience because. Because like competitions like that are always so hard because mm -hmm. it's a competition, but but um I don't know like it, what was I gonna say? I lost my train of thought. Here. But competitions like that are usually really hard. Mm -hmm. I um it, it helped me grow as an artist and and that's the great thing about competitions like that because then it makes people rethink, hey, is this what I really want to do? Because it's an American Idol type of thing mm -hmm. where they put you through that grueling experience. But um, in the end, you, it makes people rethink, is this really what I want to do with my life? So that's a good thing. So <laughs> that's, you came back, uh -huh. and then you won 94.5 The Beat Awards. Yes, I, I, I came back. So no, right after that, actually, I moved to LA. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, right after that competition, my family and I decided to move to LA, where my sister and I managed to land a deal, like a development series. But, based on our lives, because both my sister and I are very competitive, <laughs> and we're both singers, but um, we were just very competitive, so Disney thought that was a great idea, but then that didn't end up happening, so we moved back to Vancouver, and then I entered the Beat Music Awards, uh, it, which was a local radio competition held by the Beat 94.5, and, and I won. Like, and then I managed to... And the prize was deal. the deal? Rockstar Music Corp. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like there was any difference between the success you have experienced here in Canada and the success you experienced in Asia? Mm -hmm. Contrast, differences, similarities? There, you know what, in Asia, they were very supportive, but here in Canada, they embraced me. Yeah. It's like, they embraced me with open arms. You know, in in Asia, it's like you have to sing a certain way. As in, they they really embrace the divas <laughs> with you know the Mariah Carey voices with the, yeah. the really high whistle notes. You know, I don't do that. <laughs> but but I mean, both are good. <laughs> yeah. You know, both Asia and and Canadians have been supportive. So. That's good. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So, you obviously are a very driven person who worked hard. So, in times of where you felt like it was hopeless, how did you keep yourself motivated? Oh my God. <laughs> um, love. <laughs> For the music? Yeah. You know what? I could. I never. I could never imagine myself doing anything else. That's. That's what made me pursue a career in music. That's what helped me kept going. You know, um, there was definitely doubt along the way, but I just tried to stay positive and surround myself with positive people. Can't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, do you feel like, as a Canadian artist, it's really hard to get yourself noticed in North America? Mm, I don't know. You know, yes and no. I mean, I think it's hard e either way. It all depends on the the people that that are backing you up, the team behind you, mm -hmm. you know, um, my album just came out, so 
So uh, I hope to hear some noise soon. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, we'll see. Yeah. It came out today, right? Yes. So are you excited, nervous? Oh my God. What I kind of so feelings? I'm excited. It's been a year of writing and recording. You know, we worked really hard to make every song a hit song. Mm -hmm. you know, not just two or three good songs, but we really wanted the fans to be happy with the music. You know, it's like this introduction to me. Mm -hmm. yeah, and and so I'm I'm excited for the new year. <laughs> right. I'm more excited. Track than... or anything that really like you feel very proud of any song or. Mm, yes. Okay, I'm proud of the whole album, but the one song that sticks out is my single "Crash and Burn," my new one. Mm -hmm. Um, just because it's uh, it's so beautiful, and when I got in that, and when I went to the studio. I really got my bum kicked, but not by my producers, but for myself, mm -hmm. because I really wanted to deliver, like I wanted to deliver the emotion, but then in the end, I ended up loving it, and it's really close to my heart, because I mean, it's, it, it's true, <laughs> you know, um, it's like, so for it's, people who haven't listened to the song, what is it about? Yes, um, this song is actually about um, giving me one more chance, you know, before we crash and burn, you know, mm -hmm. I'm sorry for doing this, I know I was wrong, it's like asking for forgiveness, and, 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 the, you know, it, usually it's the guy asking for forgiveness, but in this case it's me, and I guess I, I like it so much because it's not just the guy that's bad sometimes, you know, yeah. sometimes the girls can do wrong, and that's why I wanted to deliver this song. So it was based on a true story? Yes. <laughs> Love story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you have time for boys at all with your busy schedule? Mm. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not at all. No. <laughs> That's a good one. But the, the you get it, you're getting a lot of attention now, aren't you, from a lot of people because of your rise to fame. So how are you handling all the attention? Is it just very um, overwhelming or are you just born for it? <laughs> It's flattering, but I don't really get let it get to my head. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because, because, you know, at the end of the day, I know that without the makeup and the nice clothing and, and just sweatpants and a t-shirt, people would be thinking very differently. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. But it's cool. It's flattering. It's nice to be recognized. <laughs> Do you feel that you're some sort of... Um Kind of like a not a sex symbol to say, but like a sexy symbol. Uh -huh. um, I don't know. I mean, I guess people have said that, and I can, and I guess uh, I don't know. People have said it, but I don't think I am. I mean, I'm such a nerd. <laughs> yeah. If they only knew the other side of me, like the weird, quirky, fun side, they would not think I'm sexy. I'm just like. I'm sorry, but that's just for the camera. <laughs> I'm totally playing. <laughs> that's good. You have two sides, though. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, obviously, then when you aren't recording and stuff, what what do you do on your time off? Do you just relax or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, when I'm not when I'm not in the studio or performing or doing what I do, I'm at home. <laughs> yeah. I'm at home hanging out with my sister or my dog, and we're just we're just chilling. We watch TV and do absolutely nothing and I eat. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great thing to do. <laughs> I eat and then the week before I have to do something like diet. But <laughs> you, So you graduated high school. Mm -hmm. Did you or do you want to pursue any post-secondary or anything like that or are you just focusing right now mainly on the career? Mm, you know my parents would love for me to do <laughs> the whole post-secondary you know go to university because because being Filipino, you know, you, they want you to be a doctor, be mm. a nurse, be a doctor, you know? Yeah. yeah. But I was, I was always music, music, music. And, and I will keep doing it till I'm 50 if I have to. <laughs> you know? That's good. Um, this is something I want. And what? I don't really like to have a backup plan because then it's like a safety blanket. It's exactly. It's just there. You know? And I don't want that. I just want it. To do it. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, obviously you are living the dream. <laughs> Thank you. I'm really lucky actually. You know, being in so many competitions and mm -hmm. auditions, I've seen so many talented people. And to be doing what I'm doing, I'm really lucky. <laughs> <laughs>
pain How could I be such an idiot What's happening through the door, please open it I'm down on my knees and the neighbors can see That I regret so 